All righty. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this week's live training session. In this video, we're going to be going over fats, but first of all, I'm hoping that everybody's having a really good week. It's our first Thursday, so we should be winding down the week and getting ready for the weekend. I know where I'm at, it's been raining all week and I'm calling for good weather for the weekend. So I'm looking forward to that, hoping to get some time outside. Um, so hopefully you guys will get some time to enjoy what you want to do this weekend as well. But without further ado, let's jump on into the topic. Um, so obviously, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about carbs and how important they are to our diet. And then I also mentioned we were going to be covering the other two main macronutrients, which are proteins and fats. So in this video, we're going to be talking about fat. Um, and fat is a huge fad rap. And as much as it is as bad of a rap as it gets, it's actually very important. Um, and the type of fats we're talking about is not the fat that you store on your body, but dietary fat, basically the fat that you're consuming as part of your diet. Um, and most foods contain a mix of different fats combined together. Uh, and they're all necessary in, well, most of them are necessary in some ways for your health because your body needs essential fatty acids that you can't produce that must be absorbed through what you eat. Um, and they're vital for neurological processes. Your brain and your nerves need fats to function. Uh, they also help regulate hormone production, which is a huge part of how our bodies function. And it helps your uh, body absorb fat-soluble vitamins, vitamins that can only be absorbed out of your um, diet with fat in your body. Um, and it keeps your skin and hair healthy, and it insulates your body to keep you warm, which obviously is great because we're coming up on winter, right? Um, and in some cases, certain types of fats actually boost your heart health. So that's why as much as fat, in, as far as being overweight, gets a bad rap. Dietary fat is actually essential for you to survive. Um, and there's two main types. You have saturated fats, which is where all the hydrogen atoms are linked to carbon atoms. Um, so great examples of these would be anything that's solid at room temperature. So if you think of like butter, although butter's soft, it's solid. It's not a liquid at room temperature. Uh, unsaturated are where all the, not all the hydrogen atoms are linked to carbon atoms. So these would be liquid at room temperature. So if you think of things like olive oil or canola oil or stuff like that. Um, and unsaturated is actually broken down further into two subcategories. So you've got monounsaturated which is where one unsaturated chemical bond um, is the chemical makeup of this, and you get polyunsaturated, which is where there's more than one unsaturated chemical bond. Um, so omega-3 fatty acids are a great example of polyunsaturated uh, fats. And so with all these different types of fats, it can make it incredibly confusing to know what type you should actually be eating, right? Um, and so this is where, this is the key component of this, uh, is that, Saturated fats tend to raise your low-density lipoprotein, or your LDL, which is often referred to as your bad cholesterol level. Um, while it also decreases your high-density lipoprotein, or HDL, which is your good cholesterol. So by doing this, it actually increases your chances of heart disease and stroke and many other medical problems. So saturated fats, not good. Um, unsaturated fats actually lower your LDL cholesterol levels and increase your HDL cholesterol levels. So this decreases your chances of having a heart disease and stroke and any other medical problems that are linked to that. Um, so this is why most of any dietary fats you take in should come from unsaturated fats. And there's a few healthy saturated fats, but most of your dietary fats should be unsaturated fats. And then there's a third type that many people ask me about are trans fats. Well, what are trans fats? Um, they can occur naturally in small amounts in like red meat and dairy products. Um, however, they can also be manufactured. And this is where most of what we take in as far as trans fats comes from. It's manufactured stuff. It's not natural. Um, and this occurs by adding hydrogen to vegetable oil, of which is referred to as personally hydrogenated oil. Um, so the whole purpose of that manufacturers do this is usually to preserve food for long periods of time, it increases their shelf life, essentially. Uh, so while obviously good for manufacturers because it makes their products last longer, um, it's not good for us because they're very similar to saturated fats. And in fact, some ways they're even worse. They raise your LDL cholesterol levels, they lower your HDL cholesterol levels, 
Um, so once again, you're getting increased chances of heart disease, stroke, and other things. Um, and because of how bad they actually are, many countries and some cities throughout and uh, states throughout the U.S. actually have banned having partially hydrogenated oils added to food. Um, so this is how serious that this is being taken because of the level of severity with the danger associated with trans fats. So that's why when you're trying to consume things, um, you should get unsaturated healthy fats, um, some saturated healthy fats, and avoid trans fats. Uh, so next we're going to talk about as far as where, what types of food are sources for all these different types of fats. So when it comes to saturated fats, the one that we already talked about was butter. Butter is a saturated fat. Um, anything that's like lard or cream based is would be a saturated fat. Uh, meat products like fatty beef, liver, um, or not liver, lamb, uh, pork, um, any poultry that has the skin still on it, um, beef fat or tallow, uh, and cheese or other dairy products like milk or yogurt that are made from whole or reduced fat to be like 2%, those would all have saturated fats in them. And obviously, as you can see, some of these we do eat. The key is eating the healthy ones. To, you know, don't you know, use minimal amounts of them, but if you're going to consume it, consume stuff that have other nutrients in them as well, so you're not just having fat. Like butter really I mean, tastes great, but it doesn't uh, serve any nutritional benefit versus if you're gonna have like a pork, Pork has saturated fat in it, but it also has a bunch of other nutrients. And if you're not consuming it on a regular basis, then, you know, once in a while. And there's different types of pork, obviously bacon versus a lean pork chop. That's where you sort of have to weigh up where you're getting your saturated fats from. So when it comes to unsaturated fats, broad category, you're going to be thinking of like vegetable oils, fish, and uh, nuts. Those are, you know, the general sense of unsaturated fats if you're going to break it down even further so if we're looking at mono unsaturated you're thinking like olives canola peanut or sunflower oil any one of those oils would be mono unsaturated fats um, in addition avocados uh, which are a great source because it's an awesome healthy fat um, peanut butter and most nuts fall into the mono unsaturated fat category so when you're thinking of poly unsaturated this is going to be corn or soy oil um, walnuts pine nuts, uh, flaxseed, sesame, uh, sunflower or pumpkin seeds, uh, salmon, heron, and sardines. Um, and the last three, the fish, are great sources of omega-3 fatty acids. And this is why you should be incorporating more fish into your diet, the, this type of fish, the healthy fish as well. Um, and then when it comes to trans fats, this is where we're going to be talking about fried foods like donuts. Um, any commercially made baked goods such as cakes, high crust, uh, biscuits, frozen pizza, cookies, personal favorite, um, crackers, and stick margarine, margarines or other types of spreads fall under the trans fats. So these you want to avoid as much as possible, but not completely. Um, and obviously, if you like baked goods, rather than buying commercially made products, make your own because you're going to use less fats and things like that than you would if you, know, if you buy something that was made by a company, essentially. So when you get into that, that's where obviously, you know, there's choices you can make to make sure you're getting the right type of fat, the healthy fats that are going to actually help your body rather than cause you to become overweight. Um, and this gets into the question of, well, how much should you be consuming, correct? Um, so on average, if, you know, if you're following just the regular general recommended daily intake of food and you're breaking it down as far as your macronutrients, um, about 15 to 20 percent of your daily calories must come from the dietary fat. And this is where you want to get to healthy fats. You should make up the most of that. Um, so this is roughly, if you're trying to actually calculate about how many calories that would be, it would be if you take 0.3 grams per pound of body weight per day. That's how much um, fat you should be consuming in grams per day. Um, and you should be favoring monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, and healthy saturated. So basically a third from each one of those buckets. Um, and then obviously, as we were talking about, avoid trans fats as much as possible, if not completely. Um, so for the American Heart Association, they recommend 
for getting about five to six percent of your calories from saturated fats. So they recommend even less than the one third concept. Um, which obviously, I mean, they're concerned about heart health and all that, which is hugely important. And so this means if you're on a 2,000 calorie uh, diet a day, uh, then no more than um, your 120 of your overall calories intake will be done for, from saturated fat. Um, so that's roughly only 13 grams which that's very easy to hit because fats are high in content. Um, so when you're looking at that, you have to keep in mind that fats, when you're taking them, it's nine kilocalories per serving for fats versus four for both um, carbohydrates and proteins each. So this, there's a very high calorie content with fats, so that's why you have to be careful with that. Um, so when you're trying to plan your meals and you know, your food intake, there's some tips that you can follow that will help you get those healthy fats and avoid the uh, unhealthy fats. So you want to basically have a dietary pattern that is placing emphasis on fruits, vegetables, whole grains, low fat dairy products, think skim products, skim milk, skim like yogurt, those type of things. Um, poultry, obviously without the skin, uh, fish and nuts. You want to put as much of those type of foods, the whole foods, unprocessed foods of those products into your body. Um, and you want to limit red meat occasionally. That's okay. You can have some. Just don't go overboard having it multiple times in a week. And try to pick cuts that are lean cuts. You don't want to go with a high fat content. Uh, and then also avoid any sugary foods or beverages as much as you possibly can. So it gets to sodas and all those uh, sweets that we were talking about. And you want to start incorporating more fish that are rich in omega-3 fatty acids into your diet. As I mentioned before, salmon is a great one of these. Um, you can substitute this in for meat at least like twice a week. That would, should be, that would be sufficient to get you to where um, you need to as far as getting the recommended daily intake of that. Um, so, and if you're obviously cooking at home, you, you can trim the fat off meat yourself or if you're purchasing at the store that's why they have butchers there you can actually ask them to do this for you um, and that way you can have them also if you want or you can do it yourself remove the fat and skin from poultry and such so this is all different ways to be able to make the meats healthier for you to consume um, and when it comes to the snacking obviously you go with healthy snack choices so instead of getting potato chips you can try um, a small handful of like unsalted peanuts or edamame, which is soybeans, um, which are actually really, really good. Key here is don't put too much salt on the outside, um, which is why a lot of people enjoy them. Um, but those are healthier options because not only, obviously, the potato chips are going to be carbs and fats and salt and all these other things. The unsalted peanuts or the edamame, they actually, especially the peanuts because they have protein um, and fat they're going to keep you fuller longer. And the key thing is to having obviously a portion size because it's very easy to go overboard on uh, the serving size because, you know, you're hungry, you want something to eat, you throw in a handful of nuts and you're like, okay, I'm still hungry. Throw in another handful of nuts and you keep doing this until you register that you're full. Well, you, your body takes a little bit of time for it to actually be like, okay, hey, I've got food in here. You know, I'm no longer hungry. And so that's why you have a handful of nuts and then, you know, give it a few minutes to see how your body responds. Um, drink some water and, you know, have that as a guide as far as how much, or, you know, do you really need to eat? Um, so, and then if you're, you know, you're trying for like a salad you're going to make at home, put avocado on there. Um, this is actually really, really good. Uh, and, or you can put nuts or like garbanzo beans as a topping instead of like um, cheese or other things like that. That would be, you know, the unhealthy fat, replace it with the healthy fat. Um, so this is why, you know, simple tips, simple changes can be enough to get you to where you're having more of the healthy fats and less of the unhealthy. Um, so when you're cooking, you want to use like the naturally occurring um, unhydrogenated vegetable oils. So this is where we're talking about like canola oil, safflower, sunflower, or olive oil are the ones most often used in cooking. Obviously, you know, if you're making you're sauteing, you're going to use olive oil. If you're baking bread, canola oil is probably going to taste a little better. Um, and so you can substitute using oil instead of butter. 
um, which is a great way to make sure you're getting your healthy fat and taking out the unhealthy stuff. Um, and then the same thing as far as like margarines and stuff like that, you actually have to look at them and be careful as far as which ones you're using, how much trans fats in there, using and such. Um, this gets back to reading food labels, understanding what's in the food is key. Um, it's not just, you know, how many calories and trans fats and all that. It's look at the ingredient list. You know, obviously, the butter is usually pretty simple um, as far as cream, salt, stuff like that. But I'm talking about actual made products. You know, look at what's in the ingredients, look at the trans fats, total fats, all of that. Um, definitely, you want to limit processed foods. Fried foods are not good for you, um, especially commercially made baked goods. We talked about that. Um, these are often made with partially hydrogenated oils. Um, so this is where they get really bad. Um, and so they are going to contain high quantities of saturated fats and trans fat. Um, so this is where you want to look for possible stuff that shows zero grams of trans fats or something like that on the label. Um, and when you eat out, obviously, there's a big concern about how much fat you're consuming because most restaurants, A, the portion sizes are much huger than you actually need. Um, but then also how they prepare things is not necessarily as healthy as it would be prepared if you did it at home, even the same identical meal. Uh, so there's several tips here as well. You can ask your server for nutrition information. Um, it can be sometimes it's available like on restaurant websites. Sometimes they have pamphlets or posters or something that they can show you. And a lot of places actually now list at least the calories. They might not list everything, but at least the calories are listed on the actual menu. So that way you know, okay, roughly this is how many calories this meal is. Um, and I know for me personally, I do actually look at this because sometimes, yeah, I'd love to have whatever something is, but based off of what I've eaten for the day and what I, you know, if it's lunch and what am I going to eat for dinner. Did I get any physical activity for that day? What is my target calorie consumption? And I've actually altered what I'm going to eat based off of that information that's provided. Um, and you said you want to choose items that are lowest in saturated and trans fats. So some tips for doing this are choose options that are baked, uh, grilled, roasted, poached, sauteed, or barbecued rather than like deep fried or anything like that. And especially if it's breading on the outside, that's usually an indication there's going to be a lot of fat in there. Um, and the, you can ask the restaurant to season your food with like lemon or pepper or other spices rather than a sauce or a gravy, which is a great technique because that's sauces and gravies have a lot of fat in them just naturally because of the way they're made. Particularly um, cream based or butter based uh, sauces. So if you're at like an Italian restaurant, go with the tomato sauce option rather than like the Alfredo because the Alfredo is not only cream, it's also got butter in it. And in some cases, it also has cheese. So right there, you're getting a triple whammy of stuff. And believe me, I love Alfredo. Alfredo is amazing, but try to be aware of that and only have it every once in a while. Um, instead of choosing meat or cheese based on trays, try to find ones that are based off of fish or plants. Um, and this is the way that you're substituting the unhealthy stuff, you know, for the good stuff. Um, so when it comes to salads, sort of as we were talking about at home, you can have them replace any cheese or anything like that with nuts or seeds or just have them obviously take it off if they don't have other options. Um, and then go for the oil-based salad dressing and have them bring it to you on the side. That way you can control how much you're actually putting on. Um, so... As far as side dishes, same thing. You go with vegetables instead of fries or Caesar salad because Caesar salad dressing is a cream-based salad dressing, so it's going to be higher in calories than an oil-based one. Um, and obviously, key thing here with any restaurant is avoid fast food restaurants. Obviously, anything there is going to be fried. Um, it's use a lot of partially hydrogenated oils there. Um, it's just even the salads when you look at the number of calories and the stuff. In there because of the amount of toppings that they offer those are usually higher in not only calories but fats than any obviously salad you're going to get anywhere else but in some cases it's actually higher than some of the meat products that are on their menu which many people are like oh i ordered a salad from you know such and such fast food place it's got to be healthy because it's not the burger well when you look at if you put everything on it it's actually just as unhealthy if not even more unhealthy than the burger um so that's not to say don't eat the burger. It's just saying don't go there to begin with. Um, 
So the key thing with the whole concept of dietary fats is that you can't cut them out completely from your diet because your body needs them. Um, you just have to be smart about what type of fat, where it's coming from, and all of that. Um, so just remember, because as we were talking about, any calories from fat, because fat is high in calories. So you have nine calories for every gram of fat. So this is where you have to be selective in where you're getting them from, and obviously how much of calories you're actually overall taking in from fat. Um, because is the reason why is fat is more energy dense than carbohydrates and protein. So that's why there's more uh, calories per gram. Um, your body does use this, but you just have to be careful you're not taking in too much. So obviously, it's more, if you take in above what your body needs, then it gets stored as a physical body fat um, versus, you know, dietary fat that your body uses. Uh, so you obviously, as we were talking about, the key thing with choosing healthy fats is you want to focus on the unsaturated fats and limit saturated fats and definitely avoid trans fats as much as possible. Um, so hopefully this was a helpful lesson as far as making the distinction between all the different kinds of fats, where you should be getting it from and all of that. Um, I know initially when I was trying to learn all this, it's like, oh my God, how am I supposed to remember it all? Um, so the key thing, you know, is just focus on getting your dietary fats from healthy sources. Um, and avoid things that you know are high and saturated in trans fat. But thank you guys for joining me today. I'm so excited we got to spend some time together. Uh, if you have questions, comments, put them below, email me, message me. Love to hear from you. Um, and otherwise, you guys have a great rest of your week. Have a great weekend. And I will see you next week in our next training session.